Cordyceps militaris is more prone to genetic degradation or senescence when compared to other mushrooms like oysters. When the mycelium is exposed to high temperatures, overexpansion, or old age, it will start producing deformities and mutations. So in this video, I'm going to be collecting multi-ascospore isolates to start the life cycle over. I harvest one of the cordyceps and stick it to the top of a sterilized water agar plate using Vaseline and a cotton swab. The ascospores will discharge onto the water agar plate below within a few days germinating into monokaryotic mycelium. The monokaryotic mycelium from nearby ascospores fuse together forming dikaryotic mycelium which is capable of fruiting. After sticking the cordyceps to the top of the agar plate, it is sealed with parafilm and allowed to incubate at 70 degrees Fahrenheit for two weeks. It's not needed in this method, but you can use a microscope to get a closer view and maybe find the clamp connections that verify the dikaryotic mycelium. After observing the plate for two weeks while it's incubating, you will start to see the zones of mycelium on the leading edge are very uniform and most likely dikaryotic. A sterilized scalpel is used to transfer a piece of the leading edge into liquid culture media. I'll leave a link in the description to my other video that has the liquid culture recipe and the substrate recipe. It is better to grow the mycelium in a liquid culture rather than on an agar plate because if cordyceps mycelium is allowed to replicate in the presence of oxygen, the rate of senescence is increased. After the wedge of mycelium has been added to the liquid culture jar, it is magnetically stirred for a few minutes every day for two weeks and stored at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. After about two weeks, it should have generated enough mycelium for you to make multiple syringes with. At this point, I use a sterile syringe to suck up some of the mycelium and inject it into a sterilized jar of rice substrate. By doing this, I'm testing the fruiting viability of the chosen multi-ascospore isolate. The remaining master liquid culture is stored in the refrigerator until the results of the viability test are known. I use 12 milliliters of the liquid culture and inject it into the rice jar making sure to cover the entire surface evenly. After inoculating the rice jar, I allow it to colonize in the dark for 3 days at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. After three days of colonizing, the jar is placed under LED lights for 12 to 24 hours per day. You'll know the culture is viable if you see pinning within 20 to 30 days. Using multi-ascospore isolates is kind of like a genetic crap shot, so you could end up with some really good genetics or you could end up with a non-viable strain. Single ascospore isolation and breeding techniques can result in more consistent genetics. Considering how much easier it was collecting multi-ascospore isolates compared to single ascospore isolates, I am satisfied with the results. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this one.